What's going on, everybody? All right, so for those of you that are turning in live, we wanted to spice it up a little bit here on social media. You get a lot of insight from experts and all of that, but not too often do you actually get to tune into a game show. So we are here today. Yes, this is a game show. So if you're going to scroll through the feed, stop, don't go anywhere. You're going to want to learn a lot today. And so here's kind of the million dollar question, and then I'll show you what the game is. In dentistry, there tends to be this back and forth between a dentist wants to get more new patients. So is it like the marketing that helps you get those new patients? Is it how your team answers the phone? Which is it? So because of that, we thought we would put together a game show called Minute to Win It. You are in it now. You're watching live. But with that, we had to invite some guests to our game show. So with me today, I'm very excited to have with me, first off, Dan Dalmain. Uh, and Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you on Minute to Win It. And before we get into the the the, the game and all of this and answer this question that everybody wants to know in regards to, you know, pay, new patients and marketing and answering the phones, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure. Yeah. Hi, uh, Dan from Delmain. Uh, Delmain helps dentists convert more website traffic into patients, leveraging digital marketing, website design and branding. And from startups to uh, DSOs, from GPs to implant centers, we serve 150 practices across the United States. I love that. All right. And as you can see, everybody, this is not like Family Feud. Dan does not have his family with him. He is here by himself. So if you are rooting for Dan, be sure to kind of, you know, be there for him, cheer for him, all that good stuff or whatever. All right. So our next contestant is Laura Nelson from Front Office Rocks. How you doing, Laura? Hey, good. I'm so excited you invited me on to this, this fun game. I love game shows. Yes, Minute to Win It. And so tell everybody about Front Office Rocks and all the exciting things that you're doing. So I am Laura Nelson. I'm the founder of Front Office Rocks. And at Front Office Rocks, we focus on team training. So we help your team do better on all aspects of answering phones, customer service systems, everything that happens within your practice. And so I'm representing the team today when it comes to winning the Minute to Win It game. So um, that's Front Office Rocks. All right. All right. So here's how Minute to Minute works, everybody. I've got seven questions. And what we want to find out in regards to getting new patients in a practice, is it marketing that you're doing and some of, some of the marketing tactics, or is it how your team answers the phone? Or could it be both? We don't know, but these two are definitely going to help us today. So here's what we're going to do. I got seven questions. Both Dan and Laura are going to get asked the same question and they each only have a minute. So I'm going to go ahead, pull up my stopwatch. They only have a minute. Uh, if they are still talking, I'm going to go ahead in my game show voice, cheesy voice here on social media and cut them off. So Dan and Laura, are you guys ready? We're ready. Let's All go. Right. All right. The first one, we're going to go with Dan first. So here we go. Question number one, what marketing strategies are most effective for a dental practice? Go. Okay. Quickly, I'll say everyone loves black and white answers, but I will say it depends on what stage of the practice it is. So startup acquisition established, additionally, if you're a GP or specialist, but let me just kind of give kind of a general sort of best practices typically. Startups, uh, from a marketing standpoint, Google ads is great because if you're a GP, you can do a new patient special, bring all those new patients in. If you're a specialist, you can get pinpoint accuracy on that inbound website traffic, whether it's a full arch, ended on a search, whatever, they're more likely to convert. If you're an acquisition, SEO, probably, because maybe you're going through a name change, you have an outgoing versus incoming doctor, you're merging Google reviews, you're building off the existing Google presence, so SEO. And then finally established, like Facebook, Instagram ads can work, build off your existing brand reputation, leverage your existing following, um, re-engage existing patients. Um, and then finally, I think like overall, just having a really strong foundation. So like number one- brand One minute. Brand. That's it. One minute. Oh man. He was just getting going, Laura. Just getting going. I hope you wrote down the notes of what Dan shared. I hope you wrote those down. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? All right, Laura, let's get reset here. And it is to Laura. The question is what marketing strategies are most effective for a dental practice? Go. So unlike the marketing team and the Dan's of the world, I have one direct answer and it has to do with customer service. Your team, the patient experience is the most important thing when it comes to marketing your practice. It does not matter what you have it on the internet. It does not, I'm not saying you shouldn't have great things on the internet. I'm not, I'm not opposing that Dan, but when it comes down to it, it's the patient experience because 
when they're calling your practice, if the phone's being answered, how it's being answered, how they're greeted when they show up, how they're handled in the practice, you know, are we asking for reviews on the back end? Are we fully taking care of our patients? That is really the number one marketing strategy. Do not market your practice if ultimately your patients don't come in and get an amazing experience. So ultimately my answer is customer service for your patients. Under a minute. <laughs> 50 seconds, Dan, 50 (laughs) seconds. All right, so here we go. Let's see, because we're going to turn this right back around on Laura Dan. She's going to go first for this next one, okay? What can an office do to get their phones to ring with more new patients go? Oh, geez, that's a good one. Um, I would say, first of all, I'm going to even back it up. Just answer your phones. Just answer your phones because right now the average practice misses 91 calls a month. So if you're not answering your phones, you don't even know what new patients you're not getting. The second thing is redefining what you consider to be a new patient. New patients don't always just call in and say, hi, I'm a new patient. I want to schedule an appointment. Sometimes they're calling in and saying, how much is your crown? Do you have weekend hours? You know, do you do this procedure? So really defining what is a, a new patient, which basically in my mind, it's anyone that has teeth or does it, right? It's anybody who's not a current patient in your practice. So opening up the idea of what a new patient is and training your team to understand ultimately their job is to convert anybody on that phone to a patient in your chair and really helping them understand that. There Dan, we go, I, that's all I got. I, Dan, I think she has a clock there. Like, I don't know if you saw her kind of look to the side. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, not no. Good, good. Now that that was great, Laura. That that was. Nobody said we couldn't bring props, right? Completely, completely. And you know, as I'm like hearing this, I'm thinking to myself, like this might be a new trend. Like, who would not want to go get like CE in like six minutes, right? Like, get like CE (laughs) in six minutes. All right, Dan, you're next. Here's the question: What can an office do to get their phones to ring with more new patients? Go. Okay, so putting on my marketing hat here, I'm going to give some kind of specific blanketed. Uh, ideas. Some of them are a little bit controversial, but uh, here we go. Um, To echo Laura's point, I think um, as a practice, if you can offer flexible hours and days, like early mornings, evenings, weekends, I mean, especially practices are concentrated in more like populated areas and like catering to kind of the more like business crowd. Uh, Second, if you're insurance-based practice, do list every insurance you accept on every single page of your website because people lead with like, I have Blue Cross Blue Shield looking for a dentist. Boom, that shows up right on your website. And then finally, if you're a GP, test the waters on a new patient special. I mean, and if you go that route, kind of the sweet spot is $99, whether it's like an x-ray exam, et cetera, like you decide what you want to do there, but $99 is what we determine is kind of the sweet spot. So those are three ideas. I can get the, the phone ring. One minute. Look at that. He got it. Hey. That was good. <laughs> it was good stuff too, Lark. I didn't want to cut him off, but I mean, he finished right in time because I mean, he's sharing some, some good nuggets there. Okay. I think they were great. I agree with everything you said. Okay. Are we allowed All right. to agree with a competition? I think I so. I mean, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> right. 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 All right. We, we, we live in a kinder, gentler world. Okay. So we're on to like question number three, and that is, how can an office attract more cash patients? And Dan, I think this is where you start. So how can an office attract more cash patients go? Yes. Okay. Attracting cash patients. Um, I think your goal as a practice is you really want to position yourself as being more aspirational and less obtained. Okay. So vice versa, insurance driven practices, a little bit more obtainable, approachable, that kind of thing. You kind of want to push yourself in kind of like an upper echelon sort of like messaging of life. Okay. So there's a couple of things you can do there. I would say like solid slash memorable branding, like really build, lean into that because that's your foundational like marketing piece that does everything. Um, messaging, like really focus on like your value proposition, like what makes you different? Like, because otherwise you're going to be kind of blanketed with all those other insurance practices. Second, professional photography and videography. I know you've heard this a million times. It works. It is arguably, I would say, the best investment uh, you can make from a marketing standpoint. And then finally, if you have an antiquated website, get that bad boy updated, modernize that presence because that's likely going to be your first touch point with practices. Bam, one minute. Look at that. Woo. Mic drop. <laughs> I mean, he, the momentum is, is uh, flowing, flowing to Dan. All right, Laura. 
you are next with this one. How can an office attract more cash patients? Go. So I believe everything that happens within your practice is what's going to go out into the world. So circling it back, back around to my first answer about customer service, your patients who receive quality service in your practice are going to go out and tell other people about their experience in your practice. So there's a big difference to getting a referral and review that says you should go to this practice. They gave good discounts. They belong to every insurance. They only did what I needed done and didn't do anymore versus you should go to this practice. They take care of me and my family. They are high quality. They're amazing. Their customer service is awesome. When people are going out and talking about you, that conversation you're not involved in comes from their experience in your practice. So elevate your customer service because people will pay more for things they see a value in. And so if they see a value in coming to your practice, they're going to tell other people to come to your practice, which will bring you more cash patients. 59 seconds, 55 seconds. Good I have job. five more Good seconds. Job. I could have said Good one job. more word. You, you, you close it up, right? They're like, I mean, Hey, when have we ever been to a valuable course that was not, you know, too short, right. Or too, exactly. too long. I don't know what the saying is, but it's, if it's, if it's, if you're, you're being respectful for my time. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and start with Laura on this next one, uh, which is what can an office do to manage patients calling in that are unqualified? This is interesting. All right, Laura, go. Okay. This is a touch point where he said controversial stuff earlier. I'm going to go controversial now. Let's do it. I understand that we have an efficiency of time, that we don't want to waste our time with patients that are maybe not, we're not on their plan or their Medicaid or Medi-Cal or whatever. But what we have to remember first is patients are calling our practice their people, their people first. And so many times we rush to go to, are they qualified or not? Do we take their insurance? Are we in network for them? And I suggest that you qualify them, but not first. Let's find out who, they're, who they are, why are they calling? Let's treat them like a person. You can find out the qualifying questions during the conversation without spending 15, 20 minutes on there. I'm not saying you spend a ton of time with the patients, but first let's build some rapport with that patient. Again, they may not be qualified for your practice, or maybe one day they will be and they'll call you, or maybe one day they'll go to their neighbor and say, you know, I can't go to One minute, practice. one minute. Oh, oh, I recommend man. others. Okay, good. Damn, Damn she, she, she loved that question. If I you know, that's a good a minute, one. Right, you love it. You're like, I want to keep talking about this. Controversial so, ones are listen, hard. You want to clarify you wanna it. Learn, you want to learn more about Front Office Rocks and you want to hear what Laura had to say? Give her a call. All right, so Dan, this is up to you. What can an office do to manage patients calling in that are unqualified? Go. Okay, I'm going to give a very intuitive answer to this. This might be silly, but uh, I like intuitive. it. So I'm going to answer it this way. Okay, so I would say ask that unqualified person how they heard of your phone. And then like just front desk or whoever's answering the phone, like make a list of common reasons of why quote unquote these unqualified people are coming in. And then like with your list, like start with the repeat offenders, then start investigating, right? So is it incorrect messaging on the website? Is it because they're listed on an, uh, an insurance company's website that you no longer accept? Uh, is there misinformation about your practice online? And like quick bonus round, you can actually do a search, like the name of your practice plus whatever that missing information is. So if like Medicare, Medicaid people are calling in, do that search along with your website and you might find a website where they're saying, oh, this practice accepts Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing. Man. <laughs> I ran out of that is. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, it, it, it's flowing. You know and I mean? have to tell you, I've never heard anybody give that answer before. So I just learned something today yeah. on this, this game show. Super valuable. All right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to keep momentum going. We're going back to Dan on this one. Here's our next question. Um, and this next one is is good because when I think <laughs> when I'm reading this one, I think about like the RSVP of a wedding. Like there's like this like list of things that you don't want to be right. Like you don't want to be that person that like doesn't RSVP or if you do, you don't show. I think there's one thing below that. Is that like the no show dental patient? Right, guys? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's like you don't want to be that person. But in that spirit, Dan, we're going to start with you. What can be done to reduce patient no-shows? Go. Yeah, so probably an obvious answer, but I think you really need to lean into this and it's it's leveraging your existing software for automated patient communication as much as possible, right? So whether it's like text, emails, phone calls, like patients will often indicate their preferred method of communication. And so like leading up to that appointment, like weeks before, start sending multiple reminders, like, you know, press one if you're confirmed, press no if you need to reschedule. 
And in a way, you can kind of almost lean into being a little bit on the annoying side um, because at the end of the day, you want them to show up to your practice, right? And most practice management softwares have this built in, this capability. If they don't, then there's outside software companies that can tether into your PMS as well. Oof. I, I mean, that's it. That He's done with that thought, Laura. He is exactly. Done. That is All great. right. All right. So I think I know where Laura is going with reducing no-shows. Go. Okay. So I can't give all the answers in one minute. Just not possible. So I say there's three <laughs> oh, different- Oh, that disclaimer, Dan. That's, that's a disclaimer. Right. There's three He's different types for of four minutes. There's so your recare patients. There's your recare. There's your production patients and your new sh- your new patients. Recare, production patients. You got to come see me at front office rocks. I got all of that. But for your new patients, here's the two reasons I think we have new patient no-shows that you can work on. One is building rapport with that new patient when they call in. We're so darn efficient on the phone sometimes that we schedule them. We get their insurance. This is me on the phone doing my thing. I don't even build rapport with them. I don't welcome them to the practice. I don't introduce myself. I don't, somebody's more likely to show up if they feel there's a relationship or a commitment with you. So one is build rapport. Second is don't schedule them too far out. They need to be scheduled in the next 24 to 48 hours, 72 max. They're motivated right now to show up to your appointment, to your, come to the dentist. You need to get them in the schedule right now. So build rapport with them and get them in as soon as possible. 50 seconds, 58 seconds. Look at that. Seconds. And so I'm good. not using so a timer. I'm not so I good. That, 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 yeah, that was awesome. All right. So okay. this next one. So I'm wondering when either of you like are going to answer a question and be really under time and, and have it be really effective. I'm just going to put that out there. Cause I think maybe with this next one, you can, but we'll see. So Laura, we're going to start with you. How important is an office website reviews and an online presence go? Oh, I can do this one in under a minute. That's easy. Um, it's vitally important. So any new patient, any particular or any patient who's considering your practice, they're going to go two places to find out about you. They're going to go to your website or your reviews. If I'm going to look at a restaurant, I'm going to go to the website, I'm going to go to the review. So like Dan said already, your website, they're judging you on your website. If your website looks old and antiquated, they're assuming your dentistry is old and antiquated. If it's scary or if it's not welcoming or if it doesn't have a call now, they're 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 going there and judging you. And then the reviews like I talked about. So it's vital that if you want more new patients, you've got to make sure your website and your reviews are updated, that they're regular, that that people can read about you and feel welcome to pick up the phone and call you because everybody doesn't like to go to the dentist. So don't give them a reason not to go from those two, your website or your reviews. Awesome. Man, I get nervous with this. Like, I'm like, listen, I know. To I'm like, how do I'm I like, close come this? Come on, Laura, finish, please. I don't want to have to do it or whatever. <laughs> um, all right, Dan, it's your show. Yeah. You're talking to a marketing person that does all this. So you're going to get a bias answer. And I, I'm not going to give you the predictable answer. Um, but I want to say what happens when you do have all of these in alignment, like a modern website, tons of reviews, great online presence. Like, here's what happens. Like, one, if you're a practice that wants to shed insurances, you probably can. Uh, two, if you're a specialist, you can rely less on referring GPs. And finally, you can attract more cash paying patients. All these things, three things happen when you have amazing reviews, a modern website, tons of online presence, like dominating the local area. So those things happen. It's like he's answered that question before. Well, I thought, Laura, he was just going to say when I asked him, like, how important are those three things? He was going to say super. And yeah. that was it. He was going to be like <laughs> super important. You know? Like mic drop. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but it is good to be reminded. I think both of you brought up great points or whatever. So uh, we'll do a wrap here in a second. OK, so we are on the last question uh, and we're going to go ahead. I'm, I'm losing track. I think we start with Laura on this one. Right. Um, so nope. that- Dan. Is it Dan? Dan? Okay, it's good. Yeah, yeah. See, this is, yeah, time. we're we're getting deep into the show here. So we're, this is the last question. All right. So what role does social media play into gaining more new patients? Now, before Dan goes, just think about this for those of you who are watching. If you are in a dental practice, remember you're watching this on social media, right? Okay, go Dan. Yeah, so I think uh, just to kind of broaden that question, the the role that social media plays in conjunction with new patients, I think you get three things out of it. Um, you get exposure to attract new patients. Um, you get retention because you're staying on top of, of you're staying top of mind with existing patients, and you're likely creating brand 
Evangelist, I got that word right. Okay, that's a tough word. Uh, so, so it really, it's, 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 it's giving your following an opportunity, seeing your praises and spread the word. And I will say with social media, it's so, so important. Like one, be authentic, right? Stick to on-brand stuff. Avoid the happy national floss day type posts. Like <laughs> it happens, don't do it. Um, and then really quality over quantity, right? So the greater engagement you get as evidenced by likes, comments, shares, the greater your social media users are going to build and you're going to get maximized activity. He's passionate about that one, Laura. That was 56 no. seconds, right? He no. loves it. Okay. <laughs> Laura, uh, bring us home. Last question. Last thought. Go. I'm going to go controversial on this and I'm going to say social media is dun, not going to help you. It's not going to help you with your new patients. I do not believe social media helps with your new patients. Now, that being said, it probably does, but that is not why you should do social media. But Dan took some of my answer and he didn't know it. I believe it is keeping rapport with your current patients. We focus so much on the new patients. We spend so much money making the phone ring, all the marketing, all of that. Once we get them in the door, our job is to remind our current patients as much as possible why they chose our, chose our practice. And so social media, you know, your team, your brand, reminding them how cool you are, showing them the latest and greatest technology, showing them how great your team is and the things you're doing just remind your patients over and over and over again why you guys are amazing rock stars and if they comment and they get involved and they share you're going to get more new patients but your reason for me is for your existing patients to stay connected during those six months that they're not in your practice i love it dan laura all right everybody so here's the million dollar question you want to get new patients. Is it more marketing or is it what you're doing to answer the phones? I'm going to go ahead, drum roll everybody. I think after listening to Dan and Laura, it's very apparent that it's both, right? Two people that are very passionate about what they do. One on the marketing side with Dan and the other with Laura on, on the team building and front office and all that stuff or whatever, front office rock. So congratulations to both of you. This has been a blast. But before I go, I uh, would love for each of you, I, I can't remember if we did this. It was like family feud-ish at the beginning. Just tell everybody that's watching where they can learn more about what you do, Dan, and then Laura, where they can learn more about what you do. Yeah. And thanks so much for, for hosting. This has been a blast. Um, yeah. To learn more about Delmain, you can go to Delmain, D-E-L-M-A-I-N.co. Uh, you can also shoot me an email, dan at Delmain.co. I would love to hear from you. Awesome. And Laura? Up front office rocks. Follow me on social media. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on frontofficerocks.com. And actually, John, behind you, I see that Dan is the create. And then the front office are the believe. So your backdrop is perfect. They create the get you out there. And then we believe the patients want to come to the practice. So it was a, I'll take a co-win with Dan. <laughs> Look at that. that. I mean, it's just such, such a, I love that. I love that. Yes. That's a great way to finish mic drop. And thanks for watching everybody. And if you like this game show format in a way to learn more about how to move your practice forward, Put a little thumbs up in the comments. We'd love to do this more. Thanks again, Dan and Laura. This has been awesome. You guys are great at what you do. The people that work with you, um, very, very grateful for how you guys are helping dental practices. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.